Hello, everybody. I know what you're thinking. Jonathan found some drive time podcast music. Yes, I did. Don't you love it? Welcome to your drive time podcast. Of course, if you do not have any drive time, this is your walk the dog podcast. If you do not have a dog, this is your exercise podcast. And if you do not exercise, this is your fall asleep at night podcast because my wife tells me that my voice oftentimes is good for tiring her out. (laughs) Today, I want to work through seven leadership questions that have been sent my way. And so I'm just going to read through these questions and answer them a little bit more quickly, uh, more in rapid fire succession. And we will be done inside of 10 minutes today. So question number one is this, how do you inspire a shared vision within a nonprofit organization when resources are limited. The first thing I want to say to this is that inspiring a shared vision has nothing to do with the resources that you have or do not have. In fact, I can make the argument that you need to work hard to inspire a shared vision and then the resources will follow that. And part of inspiring that vision is having a great understanding of where you are now as an organization, where God is calling you to go or end up, having a plan and a strategy so that you can move from point A to point B, and then inviting everybody to be a part of that. Now, back to the resources for just a second. Once you have that plan and strategy in place, that's what you're going to fundraise for. You're going to go to individuals and and giving units out there, whether that's a a company or a business or a foundation. And you're going to say, we have clarity on where God is calling us to go and what God is calling us to do. This is how much it's going to cost. And that is exactly what we're trying to raise this money for. Next, how can nonprofit leaders cultivate a strong sense of ownership and passion among staff and volunteers. Yeah, I just talked about having clarity of vision and strategy. And once you have that, you want to invite your team, whether that's your paid staff team, your volunteers, or maybe that's everybody together. uh, You want to make sure that they understand, again, where you are now and where God is calling you to go or end up. And then allow people invite people to play a major role in helping you get from point A to point B. And I'm not talking about just delegating responsibilities here. I'm talking about really releasing responsibilities, uh, calling people into what I call co-ownership of the vision. And as you understand what people's gifts and abilities and passions are, and you put them in the right positions to succeed as you're journeying from point A to point B, that is naturally going to create a strong sense of ownership and passion and excitement as you work together as a team to go where God is calling you to go. Next, how do you make decisions that balance immediate needs with long-term sustainability for the organization? That's a great question. And, And really, This gets to the heart of what it means to lead change in the midst of an organization. And I will say this, anytime things are going to be changing, that means people are going to be a little bit more and more uncomfortable. And so change is inevitable. You you need to make change to, to stay up with everything that's going on around you and to implement the things that God is calling you to implement. But you also need to understand that some change needs to be immediate, like right now, and some change needs to wait. And it's very, very important as a leader that you're able to discern the changes that need to happen now and the changes that can wait until later. If you try to create or make too much change at once, your team, your staff, your volunteers, your donors, they have trouble keeping up with that. So you need to make sure that you don't outpace your people and you need to make sure that you are tackling what I would call items of change in a priority order. 
There's an incredible book out there called Leading Change by John Cotter, K-O-T-T-E-R. If you have not read that, I strongly recommend it. Next question. How can nonprofit leaders encourage innovation and creativity in their organization? I will simply say this. Things are moving and changing quickly, and we need to move and change quickly as well. Now, that doesn't mean that we stray from our mission and vision and all that God has called us to accomplish, but we need to be constantly thinking about new ways to be even more effective as Christian nonprofit organizations. And I'd like to look at this question a little bit from the, from the back end, and that is, what happens if you don't innovate and create? What happens if you just keep doing the the same old things? Well, at some point, those things are going to cease to work and things are going to pass you by a little bit and you're going to be more ineffective as an organization. So how can nonprofit leaders encourage innovation and creativity? Make sure that you create a sense of urgency for it. Make sure that your staff and your team know that they are free to innovate and create. And and even if they fail at times with innovation and creativity, that's okay because that's all part of the learning process. Next, what is the biggest leadership lesson you've learned from failure? I think there have been times in the past, and I would go back to my pastoring days in a couple different local churches where I hired a person And I thought they're not exactly the right fit, but I think I can change them. (laughs) I think I can mold them. I think I can shape them into being a different person or a different staffer. And and I think that's a, a lesson that I've learned the hard way as a few of those hires didn't really work out. So I, I think during the hiring process, you really need to pay attention to your gut You need to pay attention to how you feel like the the spirit is leading you in the hiring process. You're, You're never going to hire the perfect person, but you do need to hire the person that you feel like will fit the team well and can get the job done with their gifts and skills and responsibilities. And if your thought is, I'm not sure they have it, but I think I can change them. I think I can grow them. That probably is going to end up being a tough situation that you're going to find yourself uh, trying to work your way out of later on. So uh, that's been one of the biggest leadership lessons that I've learned is that people are people with their gifts and skills and abilities. And that's a beautiful thing. Uh, But for the most part, I'm not going to be able to turn them into something different. And I shouldn't try to turn somebody into something different. Next, can you share a time when you had to make a tough decision that wasn't popular How did you handle it? I'm not going to give you the specific situation just for the sake of time right now, but I will tell you generally, this was a situation that uh, I had to make a really tough leadership decision with, and I was very concerned that if I made it, there was going to be a lot of fallout. And so for that reason, I was considering not making the change. And then I just felt like God prompted me a little bit and said, Jonathan, the question is not what will happen if you make this change but I want you to think about what will happen if you don't make this change. Well, when I looked at it from the back door and in a reverse way, so to speak, I realized if I don't make this decision, there's going to be continued frustration. There's going to be continued ineffectiveness and the organization is going to be hurt moving forward. And so for me, that made the decision to move forward a lot easier. So oftentimes when you're faced with a tough decision, don't ask, what if I make this decision? Ask, what if I don't make this decision? Lastly, how do you manage stress and avoid burnout as a leader? One word for this from me, and that word is boundaries. You need to have set boundaries in place. Nobody should be working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you say, well, of course we don't do that. But you know what? A lot of leaders do that mentally and emotionally. You need to have boundaries that guard against that. You need to have outlets in your life. You need to have other things scheduled 
to get you away from work and thinking about work. I exercise on a regular basis. And for me, that looks like signing up for a specific class at a specific time. And that's on my schedule a few days a week. And so I know that I'm not going to miss it. Uh, Other things that you need to consider are just what refreshes you as a leader outside of work. Is it going for a walk? Is it spending time with a friend? Is it playing a sport that you love or participating in a hobby? And I would also say this. Remember that you are not your numbers and your numbers are not you. Oftentimes as leaders, we think if we're fundraising well, then we're really great as a leader and we feel good about ourselves. If the money's not coming in, however, we feel like less of a leader and that begins to to stress us out. Or if things are going well with our organization, we get energy from that because we feel like that's our identity. But when things are not going as smoothly, we think, you know what, we're, we're not doing well right now. And that uh, creates stress and it creates pressure. One of the main ways that you manage stress and avoid burnout is you understand that your work is your work, even though we call it ministry. But you as an individual, you are different than that. You are a son or daughter of God. That never changes. And so draw strength and energy from that, recognize that, and then allow your leadership to flow out of that foundation. All right, everybody, those are the questions for today. Again, I just hit them in rapid fire succession. So if you would like to dig in a little bit deeper, reach out. I'm happy to expound on any of those, or maybe you have some questions that I did not get to today. Feel free to send them my way and I will be happy to answer those for you. Of course, as always, go to venture19.org to see all of our special events that are coming up soon and know that we love and appreciate you and believe strongly in your work. Thanks for listening. God bless. 